the objective was to attack symbols of American military, political, and Someone came down the hall and said, turn on the television, which we all did, and uh, knew right away that something was really, really wrong. A lot of people on Broadway, uh, their parents work in the tower, you know, and, you know, a lot of them didn't make it. Middletown South High School, uh, where I uh, started teaching uh, when I got out of college, it was one of the hardest hit uh, in terms of parents, I, I, think, I think the number was 26 parents were, uh, were lost. They'd pulled aside the students whose parents were in the World Trade Center and, uh, you know, kind of let them know and they burst into tears, so it, everybody knew something was going on. I had a teammate that, um, that had a lot of, you know, family friends that worked up in the, uh, and, you know, I don't think they made it out. Staring at those towers was something that you did every day. Uh, you looked across the the bay and there was lower Manhattan. It was just part of life. So uh, for those of us that grew up in that area, things will never be the same. 1987, Pete Lembo is a senior at Monsignor Farrell High School, Staten Island, New York, the son of an NYPD officer. I deliberately tried to not bring the job home with me, but I guess some of it always gets there. Pete is famous for saying, we do what we do. And maybe he got it from that because when, when the chips are down and, and situations like that, policemen and firemen do what they do. Being a cop in New York City was not easy uh, for my dad for 20 years. It's not easy for those guys that do it today. It's not easy to be a fireman in New York City and uh, to have to go up uh, floors and floors and floors through buildings and, and all kinds of different dangerous situations. You see him wearing that NYPD hat. This is a guy who grew up in Staten Island. His father was a New York City police officer. It's so easy to just assume that we're going to uh, live in a safe environment and that other people are going to look out for you. But, uh, you know, one thing you learn growing up the way I did and, and also doing what I do every day as a football coach, you don't take anything for granted. It wasn't just Lembo, the son of a cop. Teammates were too. Some even became cops and firemen themselves, and some in the direct line of September 11th. His name is Sal D'Agostino, and incredibly, he's one of the firefighters from Ladder Company 6 that survived when the tower went down. Um, so you can imagine uh, the impact that, uh, that that they had on his life. Our orders were to go as high as we can and do whatever we can to, to try to uh, evacuate civilians. And in my mind, we were, we were gonna try to uh, fight the fire. Sal was a really tough guy as a player. He was an inside linebacker in a 3-4 defense and a good special teams player as a junior, a starting linebacker as a senior. So why am I still here? That's a very good question and I'm still trying to answer that question. I have to hold on to my faith and believe that there is a, a, a greater meaning um, in it all. And, and just try to do the best that I can every day. I can remember uh, turning on the TV a few years later, and uh, there he was in a 60 Minutes interview uh, with several of his uh, uh, co-workers that had survived with him. And, and you can just imagine how difficult it was for, for them to, to talk about what happened that day. You try to move on as best as you can. You try to take care of the people that are close to you, that are important to you. You try to remember the lives that were lost and the guys that, that sacrificed everything. But D'Agostino wasn't the only one on Lembo's mind. It was other friends and teammates that worked in New York City or college friends in Washington, D.C., even his own team at Lehigh. And it certainly wasn't just Lembo that felt the impact. My boss was at a meeting in the South Tower. My boss was on the phone with his wife telling her that uh, he was okay, and that's when the second plane hit him dead on. The phone, his phone just went dead. One of my friends, uh, his dad used to work in the tower, and uh, he didn't make it. We lost uh, 343 New York City firemen, close to 3,000 civilians were, were murdered that day. You know, you don't, you can't really grasp that number. And what I tell people is that, you know, think about, you know, your workplace, you know, whatever it is you do for a living, Go to work and just imagine everybody that you see is no longer there. 
I learned that I lost a classmate. Uh, you know, she was on top of the tower. My brother-in-law, he wasn't my brother-in-law at the time, but you know, he actually got stuck in the city just from the, uh, the mayhem that was, uh, that was occurring. He, he was one of the many people that were walking around that day. A day forever etched in memory. Joel Godet, BallStateSports.com.